I was traveling by car to an out-of-town job assignment. I had stopped at a popular and busy gas station to fill up the car, stretch my legs, use the restroom, and grab a snack. I was approached by a developmentally disabled woman who appeared to be in her mid-twenties. She was looking for a ride to a town a couple of towns over. Her ride had abandoned her while she was in the restroom. She was a little upset. She didn't have a cell phone and didn't know any phone numbers, so I could call someone for her. I checked with the employees at the store, and they said that she had been there for an hour looking for a ride because she said her friends left her while she was in the restroom. I then made the decision to do something I've never done before. Offer a stranger a ride. I wasn't going to the town she wanted to go to, but I was heading in that direction and I told her I could drop her off at the grocery store in the next town where I would be turning off to go to my destination. The grocery store was always busy and it was very likely she'd have an easier time getting a ride to where she wanted to go also. She'd be 5 miles away from where she wanted to go instead of 25 miles and she'd have an easier time walking that distance if she had to. This was agreeable to her and we set off. Right away, I noticed a van following us. I tried to lose the van, but it kept pace. Meanwhile, the woman wanted to play with my phone. I told her no, it wasn't a toy. It was for work and I moved it out of her reach. The van speeds up and starts to get closer. The woman suddenly remembers her boyfriend's phone number and we need to call him. I can't use my phone while driving. This was pre-car sync voice activated operation and I was approaching the outskirts of the business district of next town and no cell phone use while driving signs everywhere. I told her, we're almost to the grocery store. We can call him from the parking lot. She becomes agitated and yells, no, you have to take me home. I told you I can't do that. I'm not going there. It's in the opposite direction of where I need to go and I'm expected soon. We'll call him from the parking lot. She becomes more upset and frustrated. The van is getting closer. I pull into the grocery store parking lot. It's about 4 p.m. The grocery store is busy. I pull up in front of the store and ask for her BF's number. She can't remember his number. She won't get out of the car. She's arguing with me and the van is pulling into the parking lot. There is a sheriff's deputy parked nearby and I roll down my window and signal that I need to speak to him. He walks over and asks me what's going on. I tell him where I met the woman and now she won't get out of the car and under my breath I tell him the van has been following us. The deputy tells the woman, She brought you where you asked her to. It's time for you to leave her car now. She slowly gets out of the car and I ask once more for her BF's number. And she says, you're crazy. I don't have a boyfriend. Oh, look, there are my friends now. And she points to the damn van. The deputy and I share a look and he says, give me your contact info. I can delay them for about 20 minutes while I check their license and registration and lecture them about abandoning a special needs adult. You get out of here and I'll check on you before my shift is over. And don't pick up any more hitchhikers. I left and went on to my destination. He called me to make sure I got to where I was going and told me that they were keeping an eye on the van and its owner. He told me he also contacted a colleague at the sheriff's department in the county where I was working and that she would contact me in a day or two. While I was on assignment there, I spoke to two deputies and a detective about the woman and the van. No one ever told me anything about them, but they were very interested in them. My nightmare is one day I'll turn on a true crime show and see a report about this woman and her gang robbing and killing people. So, woman looking for a ride at the travel stop, let's not cross paths again. This story took place when I was 23 years old, close to 10 years ago. I was living in upstate New York in a very rural area with my ex-boyfriend and his family. He and I used to argue quite a bit. One morning, before he went to work, he and I got into a very heated argument. He was 20 years my senior, but during this particular fight he acted majorly juvenile. He jumped out of bed, flipped me the bird and yelled, If you don't like it so much, then why don't you go back to the fucking Bronx? 
That was all the prompting I needed. I threw on my Uggs and my winter jacket, grabbed my cigarettes and flew out of the house. I am unfortunately an impulsive ass and didn't think to grab my cell phone before I stormed out. I didn't drive so my only option was to walk. I don't think at the time that I intended to walk back to the Bronx, as I was a three-hour car ride upstate, but I just needed to go for an angry dramatic walk. I realized once I got to this road at the entrance of the trailer park, that I had no idea where anything really was around me as I had only lived there a few months at that point and we really didn't go out a lot. I banked left and just walked and walked where I knew civilization was. I found myself walking alongside a very busy stretch of road, with 18-wheelers flying by, spraying me with slushy snow and soaking my shoes. I saw my then-boyfriend driving by on his way to work, and he sped up as he drove past me, evidently still angry about our fight. I thought for sure he was going to turn around at some point, but he never came back. I pressed on, deciding instead to try to walk to my best friend's mother's house, which I knew to be in the same town. Started to snow and I was losing momentum. I passed by a VFW, where a nondescript pickup truck was parked in the driveway. It wasn't until I had passed it that I even realized the driver was in the front seat. He called out to me, Hey honey, do you need help? My stomach churned realizing I would have to accept this stranger's offer. I approached his truck slowly and tried to weigh out my options. He was a clean-cut, seemingly normal older white guy. Gray hair, greenish-blue eyes, just average. I blurted out, Are you a good guy or a bad guy? And cringed at myself for asking such a dumb question. He answered, Ha! I'm a good guy. I wouldn't tell you if I was a bad guy. I ignored the bells going off in my head and got in the front seat with him. As we drove, I realized I had no clue where my friend's mom actually lived. I knew the name of the road she lived on, but it spanned a good distance so it wasn't very helpful in terms of finding my destination. I asked to borrow his cell phone so I could try calling my best friend to ask her where the fuck I was going. I called her three times and she didn't answer because she didn't recognize the number. I started to feel inexplicably hopeless. After a few minutes, he asked me where I was from and why I was out in the middle of nowhere in the snow wearing pajamas. I explained I was originally from the Bronx and that I had gotten into a fight with my boyfriend. He paused and said, Hey, you wouldn't be interested in making a little money, would you? I chuckled nervously and said, Oh, no, thanks though. He responded, Well, I just figured since you said you were from the Bronx, and trailed off. Realizing at that point that I was almost definitely in deep shit, I muttered, Oh, sure. He eyed me up and down and laughed to himself before sneering, Sure, she says. I started to panic big time but knew I couldn't show my fear. I scoured the scenery for a pillowy snowbank that I could land in if I leapt out of the truck to no avail. The houses were so few and far in between, I became certain this would be how I met my demise. I'll never know why, but it was at this point that he decided to ask me who I was going to see. I quickly blurted out my best friend's mom's name and her husband's full name. He instantly perked up and explained that he knew the husband and how they used to snowmobile together 20 years ago. I felt the greatest wave of relief when he explained that he knew exactly where his old buddy lived. When we finally pulled up to that big yellow house, it was like arriving to the promised land. I sheepishly asked his name, Steve, he said then asked mine. I gave him a fake name, spat out a bullshit thank you and ran as fast as I could from his truck to the porch. I crashed through the front door and locked it behind me. I immediately started crying and running through the house trying to find my friend's mom. I had awoken her from a sound sleep, but she didn't say a word about it upon seeing how shaken up I was. Once I knew I was safe with her, I explained everything, the fight, the fleeing, the weird guy and his sexual proposition and she listened, horrified and curious at the same time. She made me promise to never do anything so reckless again and that if I needed her to call her. She told me she would ask her husband when he got home about this Steve guy and find out more about him. 
I returned to my boyfriend's later that same day and got really stoned to try to forget about the events of that morning. The following day my friend's mom called me to tell me that Steve was a dangerous person who her husband had cut off communication with years ago. The last he had heard about Steve was that he had been arrested for sexual assault. She then went on to point out how incredibly easy it would have been for him to hurt me and leave me just about anywhere on some lonely stretch of road and no one would even know where to look for me, not to mention I might not have even been found until the snow thawed out. So, Steve, you major fucking creep. Let's not cross paths again. This happened just this past weekend somewhere between Temecula and Rainbow, California, and the whole incident took about 10 minutes. Long story short, driving back home early afternoon from Palm Springs on what would be a two-hour drive. Earlier that day, me and a male friend were out hiking on MT Jacinto. I was tired, so I feel asleep on the first hour drive home. This happened around 2.30 p.m. when we stopped for gas somewhere between Marietta or Rainbow, California. The place was well populated and even had a target down the road and was not far from a freeway exit. On my original post, a commenter said the gas station could have been by Old Town Temecula. While my friend was pumping gas, this teen about aged 17 to 19 came up to my friend asking for a ride. Even said he'd pay. I was just waking up from my nap, so by the time I was fully awake, I saw this teen already outside my passenger side door, and my friend agreed to give the kid a lift. I gave my friend the silent WTF dude look as they both got in the car but kept quiet as not to stir anything. I wasn't able to get a good look at this teen but from my observation he was a white kid, dark brown hair, possibly aged 17 to 19, 21 being the oldest. He wore all black, possibly a beanie, had a backpack and an older model LG phone or similar. He smelled strongly of weed and some other musk. He looked like an EMO kid to me. Moment creepy kid got into the car he went all crazy. Tried to sell us drugs and weed. Was eyeing the Beats headphone my friend was wearing. Attempting a trade for drugs. Tried to convince my friend to do a porn flick. Said there was good money in it. Kept telling my friend he can do a casting call for porn. That they should shoot some videos and even gave bogus website on where to get bitches. He spoke like a gangster wannabe and TBH I barely understood what he was saying. He also tried to ask for money, which means he lied about having money for a ride the first place. He mumbled to himself a lot, laughing at nothing to which I just assume he was really high off his rockers. Creepy teen also told my friend the car was trash, since all of our camping gear was in the back seat. His mood would jump from supper excited to super quiet and broody. I was quiet to near silent this whole time and obviously scared. What I did not know that he could see my facial expressions, which was mostly about to cry from the passenger side view mirror. The kid noticed this and asked me in a serious tone, why are you acting weird? And went really quiet from that point. My friend tried to distract him a lot with small talk while I scanned the road for a possible escape plan. Every time we asked the kid where he should be dropped off, as we originally agreed to drop him a few streets down, the creepy teen's tone changed and says keep driving then would switch back into pimp happy mode. I finally and quietly signaled my friend to drive onto a crowded exit where there was a diner and gas station. At least there would be witnesses in case this goes south bad. Thank heavens for rush hour traffic. Lied we were doing a store stop because creepy teen noticed we exited. Then once we parked told him nicely and calmly he needs to go. Took a while to convince him to get out. Clearly creepy kid didn't like me. I was scared out of my mind. My friend's car was also this old clunker stick shift. It tends to die or sputter and the gears sometimes get stuck. So it took us a good 10 to 15 seconds to back out the parking lot. The creepy teen gave me a lung stare down. I can tell he was pissed at me, though he seems to have liked my friend. By the time we pulled out, I can see he was calling someone on his phone. After we left and drove back to the freeway, that's when I broke down and asked my friend why the hell he did such a stupid, reckless thing, as he was the most paranoid person I know when it comes to strangers' friend told me. 
that the teen originally approached him saying his mom either forgot to pick him up and he just needs a ride a few blocks down was almost close to tears too. Spoke normal, although desperate. When my friend said no, the teen motioned that he will ask for my permission and went straight for me. I was still napping. This creep was determined to get into our car. My friend panicked and felt cornered as the creepy teen was about to go to my side of the passenger car. So he decided to play along and do what the kid wants. My friend doesn't do well with confrontations and, at his panic state, made a huge mistake. He at least admitted he fuck up big time. I pointed out the kid could have easily lured us somewhere we could have been jumped or gotten us carjacked, and we are very lucky. Hopefully, the kid was only a high and crazy runaway rather than criminal. This is a harsh lesson to my friend about the dangers of picking up hitchhikers on the road. I also told my friend if the kid had money and a working cell, he could have just taken the bus or called anyone for a ride from the gas station. Later that night, I spoke to my cousin who is familiar with the area. He told me that that place has a huge transient homelessness problem and is known for a lot of drug dens, mostly meth and heroin. Since the kid, if he was homeless, had a working mobile phone, it's possible he was a drug dealer and was luring us to his accomplices to get jumped, carjacked. I guess we really were lucky. I have a few more camping and road trips planned throughout the year. I have to admit the experience rattled me bad, and I had a few nightmares since. I was a near victim once of a road assault, so this brought back a lot of bad memories. I just bought some pepper spray yesterday, and will carefully plan our route for the next trip to be safe and travel with more people. Also, will keep an eye on my clueless friend to make sure he doesn't pick up strange hitchhikers.